خدا ہو شامل استاد ہو عامل شاگرد ہو کامل میننگ گاڈ مسٹ بی پریزنٹ دا ٹیچر مسٹ بی اے اسکالر اینڈ دا اسٹوڈنٹ اے ڈیوٹی ہیلو My name is Suhail and I am a PhD candidate at Wesleyan University's music department. My research focus is Sarangi and its practitioners. So Sarangi is an Indian bowed North Indian classical instrument and I belong to a family of hereditary Sarangi players. In today's presentation, I will discuss a chapter from my ongoing dissertation and this chapter is titled as the ritual poetics of rag from the mystical to the worldly although the influence of mysticism can be found throughout india sarangi players developed a particularly deep connection with mystics and mysticism Their association with the ineffable was believed to give their music an efficacy that could transcend the everyday. However, the revivalist Indian musicology that came out in the 20th century added many layers of complications. I will argue that while spirituality among Sarangi players may be indescribable, it is not inaudible. and remains powerful. In the last two centuries, scholars have researched Hindustani music from the context of aesthetics and theory. But less attention has been given to the mystical phenomena that constitute a crucial part of this music system. So while keeping the focus on Sarangi players I adopt a phenomenological approach to study the various types of mystical experiences associated within the lives of Sarangi players and just to be clear um I am mainly focusing on Sufi mystical experiences so Sufism is this uh Islamic form of mystical practice and this process of mine is is carried out uh with the help of an auto ethnography that draws on my own 25 years experience of being a student and a performer in hindustani music although one of many husserlian definitions of phenomenology demands focus on things themselves in a musical context these things exist within a subjective consciousness Another definition is understood as an experience that is sedimented in the human body within a cultural and a social context. So therefore to me this approach helps to understand uh, the subjective aspects of Sufi mysticism. Therefore I use ethnographic research to uncover subjective traces of this ineffable long history of Sarangi culture practices. My ethnography consists of various documented and previously undocumented case studies and therefore it addresses issues that were raised by other ethnomusicologists but left unresolved. So India is a land of uh, many religions and and it kind of practices a variety of spiritual and religious practices and they kind of coexist together uh, all across the subcontinent and um, these practices can be seen in people's daily lives in their culture um, in their traditional rituals but interestingly the relationship of music uh, with spirituality and religion is particularly multifaceted and complex Although both spirituality and religion are vast topics and complicate music theoretical explanations of Hindustani music it is crucial to understand how sarangi plays relate to them ethnomusicologist and musicologist uh, you bore uh, featured early 17th century mughal manuscripts and images 
that reveal Sarangi's connection to the mystics. Although these paintings or manuscripts fail to clarify that the Sarangi players were also mystics um, or were they not, but what they do is uh, they do kind of inform us about how Sarangi players were an integral part of this culture, of this tradition, of the process. Uh, for example, in this particular uh, image um, of a dancing Sarangi player um, who's accompanying a dervish uh, uh, getting into a spiritual ecstasy while recentering the role of Muslims in Hindustani music. Historical ethnomusicologist Catherine Schofield reveals the combination of systematized scientific knowledge and the presence of spirituality that led to revelatory experiences in music performances at the Mughal courts. Schofield's research also suggests that musicians' practice in the Mughal era had the power to bring rag energies out alive, sometimes giving them almost human-like forms. There is a very interesting story uh, Schofield narrates, uh, and this story is retrieved from um, 1750s canonical Mughal writings based on music in Shah Jahan and his son Aurangzeb's reigns. The tale attests to the personification of rags at Shah Jahan's court, and this is how Catherine Schofield describes it. Court musician Kushal Khan, great grandson of Than Sen, sang through the gentle mood of love and adoration. This is one. Ra gradually took on her personified shape until she stood before the assembly like a delicate woman wearing a white sari with camphor flowers and saffron on her body. Standing in front alone, playing her instrument and pacifying the gazelles by her feet who are listening with joy to her music. And there are other ethnomusicologists uh, such as Bonnie Wade and Dan Newman which talks about the supernatural phenomena and uh, the amazing uh, miracles that happen uh, in the Mughal court music performances. Uh, and Than Sen, one of the most important figures in Hindustani music, uh, is the key figure to that. So Sarangi player Nanni Sufi is a fascinating case study for me and uh, there has been almost no documentation uh, can be traced about him. Uh, Nanni was born and lived in Muradabad which is situated in the state of Uttar Pradesh. He was born in the mid 19th century and exact dates are unknown. He was a hereditary Sarangi player and a practicing Sufi um, who later received the title of Jadu Gire, meaning the magician. The legend goes that when he played the tappa on his Sarangi, even the metrani, which is a term for a low caste unteachable who has no musical education, froze and was spellbound by his Sarangi playing. So I'd like to stress upon uh, the style of song he played, the tappa, which are extremely complicated, uh, fast in nature songs. And as the name suggests, uh, tappa, which is derived from the Hindi word tap, meaning to bounce, uh, you as a practitioner are not allowed to stand or, uh, or, or rest rather on one note, but you are expected to be constantly bouncing so for example if i if i if i give you an example um, it will sound something like this oh <laughs> Okay, 
दुनिया वे जाने वाले हे सो इट इज एक्सट्रीमली कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एंड एंड फुल ऑफ दीज मेलिजमाज एंड 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 वेरी इंट्रिकेट न्यूसिस ऑफ हिंदुस्तानी म्यूजिक विच अनस एंड एंटिल यू हैव सर्टन काइंड ऑफ अ नॉलेज यू वुड अंडरस्टैंड दैम सो दैट्स वेर द मेटाफर ऑफ ऑफ टप्पा इज काइंड ऑफ यूज हियर इन दिस लेजेंड दैट 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 नन्ने सूफी वॉज प्लेइंग द टप्पा एंड इवन द टप्पा हैड सो मच ऑफ एफेक्ट इन इन इज प्लेइंग दैट इवन अ पेयर ऑफ अनट्रेन ईयर्स वर वर कैप्टिवेटेड बाई हिस्स म्यूजिक सो नन्ने सूफी स्टोरी टू मी रेजनेट्स विद फ्रेंच फिलोसोफर जॉन नैनसीज डिस्कशन ऑन फिनोमिनोलॉजी वेर ही सेज फिनोमिनोलॉजी ऑफ साउंड इज नॉट मेरली अकूस्टिक फिनोमिना but it has a resonant meaning and that meaning is all about sounding and resounding in the subject and back to itself furthermore he uh, nancy also posits that listener as a resounding chamber in a resounding world is making sense of inside and out of self and other of singular and plural so this concept of inside and out kind of for me stands similar to the zahir batin concept the esoteric and esto- es- es- esoteric and aesthetic uh, concept in sufism um to me the the story of nanne from a sufi point of view corroborate the real tasir which is a terminology uh, for spiritual feeling and asr which is a terminology that explains affect both these terms are heavily associated with sarangi blaze and sarangi blaze lives and their lifestyle uh, in addition uh, these two terminologies also align with nancy's discussion on resonance and resonance is the key feature of of music uh, and especially for sarangi because when you have 40 sympathetic strings trying to resonate um in a chamber for a listener you're constantly in a spellbounding affect of the player there are many other examples uh my chapter discusses and uh, these examples um also discusses the supernatural power um these practitioners had in their music and uh, one other example is um a legendary uh, sarangi name uh, bundu khan who was a descendant of uh, delhi gharana gharana is a terminology for music schools um and this particular music school claims its affiliation with sufi poet philosopher Amir Khusro who uh, just like Tanzain is an another um important figure in the Hindustani music so Bundu Khan has been uh, widely discussed in uh, ethnomusicology um uh, Daniel Newman talks about him uh, in his uh, research Nicholas Magrill talks about him in his research but not everyone has been persuaded um uh and in fact there is this one particular story which Dan Newman uh has mentioned um about uh Bundu Khan uh taking the sarangi for practice uh to his bed um uh, has been uh, criticized um in the field and on that note i'd like to say um uh, that the truth value of these stories is a much more complicated um case then it first appears uh whether they are true or false is uh, according to me is not the point well the point is that these stories have survived through the great oral culture in india and the fact that they have survived and were then mentioned by scholars is um, an evidence enough to prove their importance in regards to bundu khan taking the sarangi to his bed um uh, 
Well, in this story, there are various hidden connotations uh, that can be read between the lines. Um, for example, what does it mean that Bundu Khan is going to bed with the Sarangi? Is it um, eroticism? Is it mysticism? Or is it some kind of a psychotic behavior? Um, but that's where the discipline of ethnomusicology comes into the picture. As Bonnie Wade in her SEM's 2019 annual conference speech said, we ethnomusicologists are trying to learn about music through the social behaviors of living cultures. This is what the discipline should do. Uh, and according to me, we as ethnomusicologists are amplifying the unheard and transmitting the lost and putting a spotlight on the neglected. American ethnomusicologist Stephen Blum wrote about the use of uh, historic tales in ethnomusicological research. Uh, he says, um, scholars no less than other humans are spinners of tales who operate under certain sets of constraints and must choose from among the available narrative strategies or else devise new ones. One of our responsibilities is the historical reflection on how the narratives we offer as speakers and writers relate to those we encounter. So resonating with Stephen Blum's quote, I would say um, these stories uh, or any historical stories are, are crucial to the field and, and, and very important to ethnomusicologists to, to research upon, to learn from and uh, to shed light upon it. In the end, I would just like to say um, that for people disillusioned with formal institutionalized ideas, Sarangi players through rag music offer a seductive spirituality in which not only religion, but language, the arts, and potentially all domains of life seems to be infused with a power that is indescribable, ineffable, and in a word, spiritual. Thank you for listening.